welcome to Schenkel United Church of Christ on this fourth Sunday in Lent. This is a place, a church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So welcome to our recorded service for this Sunday in Lent. This weekend, we had to spring forward with our clocks and one advantage of having recorded services is that there was no chance of being late. No matter when you got up, you were able to watch the service. This coming Holy, Holy Week service in a couple of weeks will all be available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. They will be recorded. And then as most of you have already received word, probably we are going to be coming back to in-person worship on Easter Sunday. We will have two services, one at 8.30 and one at 10.30, and we ask you to reserve a seat at one of those services. So just call the church office um, on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday when the secretary is here and tell her how many are in your family group and which service you would like to attend. And we'll be happy to welcome you back with masks and social distancing, but being together again on Easter Sunday. Let us begin our time of worship with a word of prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for another Sunday when we can gather together in our homes and worship you and be together in spirit and in truth in our worship. On this Sunday that is the anniversary of one year of the shutdown from COVID-19, in so many ways we are weary. We've been through so many changes, so many difficulties in, in schooling and in jobs and just in our lives in general, people that we have lost because of the disease, the fear that has been among us, the election that we've been through and inauguration of another president, all of these things that have happened in these last 12 months. This morning we gather them all up and offer them back to you and acknowledge that all of these things are on our hearts and often weigh us down. And as we come to this time of worship, we ask you to lift those burdens as we offer them to you, clear our thoughts and, and our hearts that we may be able to truly be in spirit and in truth and be able to worship you together. We offer you ourselves in this time and ask for your blessing and count on your presence. And we pray in Christ's name, amen. Good morning. I miss everybody so much. And even though I can't see all of you, I feel good that I'm relating to you in some way. My Lenten practice is not something that I give up or I give away, but rather something that has become a priority in my life every year. Several years ago on Palm Sunday, Pastor Dan Moser suggested that in order to really appreciate Easter Sunday, we should try to attend one of the Holy Week services. <clears throat> so, for me, I make it a priority that I come to Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday services. Whether the Maundy Thursday service is in the social room where we reenact the Last Supper, <clears throat> or up in the sanctuary where the altar is stripped in preparation for Good Friday, or the Good Friday service is a tenebrae service, or Pastor Suzanne doing a virtual service that we watch in our living room. These services are very important to me. And I can honestly say on Easter morning, 
when we all sing Christ the Lord is risen today, I feel such joy and knowing what Jesus has done for us. I wish all my Schenkel family a wonderful Lenten season and please be safe. and confess our sins individually and then corporately. Let us pray together. God, our parent, we worship you as source of our being and sustainer of our lives. You know us from the marrow of our bones to the far reaches of our imaginations. You love us beyond our neglectfulness and throughout our strivings to serve. You abide with us whether our spirits are burdened down with doubts or buoyed up with hopes. We recognize in the depths of our hearts that our wholeness as human beings depends upon honesty before you. Yet we persist in our attempts to hide feelings from you and to shade the truth with colorings of self-interest. Forgive us, we pray. Grant that we come to see clearly that there is no health in our hiding, no beauty in our self-serving denials. Lead us into the ways of openness and truth. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, seeker and sayer of truth. Amen. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and we are set free.
Our Old Testament reading this week is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. From Mount Hor, they set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. And our gospel text is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. This is sort of in the midst of Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. Jesus speaking. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. So this morning we begin way back in the wilderness, the wilderness wanderings of the Israelite people where they are wandering and grumbling and complaining. And the text in Numbers is actually the fifth of five murmuring texts, stories. They complain about no water, and God gives them water. They complain about no food, and God sends manna. Then they complain that they don't have any meat to eat, and God sends quail. And so, so it goes. They're complaining. And I remember growing up thinking, man, those were terrible people. All their grumbling and all their complaining and look what happened to them. And then when I was in seminary, I had the opportunity to travel to Egypt and to the Sinai Peninsula and to actually climb up Mount Sinai. And because it's a significant mountain, um, we stopped to rest along the way. And when we stopped and you turned around and looked at the landscape, the, the quietness was one thing that struck me, but another was the barrenness of it. Rock, not desert like Sahara Desert, sandy, but rocky. And all the rocks are the same kind of reddish color and just so barren. And I thought at that time, no wonder the people complained. This is not a great place to have to be wandering around. 
And so I wasn't quite so hard on them after I had seen some of the places they had traveled through. At any rate, they were complaining. And what happened in our story is that God sends poisonous, or another word for it in the Hebrew is fiery serpents. Perhaps when they bit people, it felt like fire. I've never been bitten by a snake, but that's one of the possibilities of that. And when they were bitten, they died. And so then the people recognize and come to Moses and say, we've sinned, we've done wrong. Please intercede for us with God. And so Moses, as our story goes, is told to put a, an image of the fiery serpents on a pole and whoever looks at that will be saved. And I, as I read that story again, I think, wow, the image of the thing that was killing them became what saved their lives when they looked at it in faith, I guess. And then we turn to our John text where John starts out referring to this story of the, the serpents and the bronze serpent. And Jesus, the words in Jesus' mouth here are that just as Moses lifted up the serpent, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. And we know we um, equate Jesus with being the Son of Man who will be lifted up on the cross. And in John's Gospel, the word belief is a verb. It is much more than just cognitive assent to a statement of doctrinal beliefs or, oh yeah, yeah, I believe that, yeah. I believe that. In John, belief is the opposite of disobedience. And eternal life, because he talks about eternal life in our, the most famous verse in scripture probably, John 3.16, eternal life is life lived in God's presence. And I like to think of it that way because it's so much more than life in the sweet by and by after we die. Eternal life is life, fullness of life, abundance of life, because it's life lived in God's presence. And that's what we're promised in John 3.16. But in verse 19, he, talk, he uses the word judgment, and this is the judgment. And this word for judgment used here is not judgment as we often think of judgment, oh, the good and between the good and the bad. This is a word for, that we would call the word for crisis. It is that the coming of Jesus creates a crisis. A decision has to be made. You can't be neutral. You're either for or against. Hey, there's a crisis. This is, this is the crisis here. There needs to be a decision made. Are you going to believe as in obey or disobey and not believe? Lent, the season of Lent is a perfect time to consider our response to this crisis, this decision we're called upon to make. This decision that Jesus precipitates. It's a perfect time to consider the nature of our obedience. When we look at obedience in the light of Jesus' obedience, if you remember during his time in the wilderness, the temptation time, he rejected the temptation of the adversary to become a different kind of Messiah. After he fed the multitudes, he rejected the people's attempt 
to make him king. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he turned away from his own desires for the cup to pass from him and accepted it. And even on the cross, he rejected the temptation to save himself as he was taunted to do if he really was the Messiah. Jesus' obedience, even unto death, even death on a cross, that's part of the mystery of the cross, isn't it? And the cross is as much a mystery to us as that bronze serpent from the book of Numbers. What really was going on there? And what was going on at the cross? According to the Gospel of John, that was God's love on display. And just as the serpent was lifted up by Moses, so the Son of Man was lifted up, that whoever believes may have eternal life, life lived in the presence of God. And so this season of Lent, as we consider Jesus' obedience, it gives us opportunity to look at our own, to consider our obedience and where and how we are obeying and following Jesus. May we have the courage to look, the courage to consider and evaluate, and to once again say yes to Jesus. I invite you to join with me in a spirit of prayer. Loving and faithful God, we give thanks for this day and for this time that we can share being together in, in spirit and for this time of intercession where we lift before your throne of grace those who are in need of your hand of healing, of your blessing of comfort, of your provision. 
We pray today for members of Schenkel, for Laura and Christian, for Carol and Henry, for Lynn, Dave, and Katie, for Sharon, Dan, Malcolm, and Amelia, and for Tracy. We ask that you would bless each one, give them wisdom and decisions they need to make, make them a blessing to their families and friends, and continue to encourage them in their faith journey. We continue to pray, loving God, for all who live with the challenges of mental illness. We lift up Sam and Elizabeth and all others who live with these challenges and those who accompany them, whether they're friends or spouses or parents or siblings. Give them courage as they accompany those who are struggling. And we pray especially for all who are in, in need because of the isolation of the pandemic, because of the weariness of this isolation and need to wear masks and, and lack of good health care so often. We ask for your provision of good therapists and doctors, people that will help them to navigate their specific health challenges. And we lift up today also Barb and her continued recovery from her transplant and ask for your blessing of health and strength. We pray for Linda and Bill and for Rosemary, for Dawn and good healing of her foot, for Barb as she faces surgery this week, we ask for your blessing and for good outcomes for her. And loving God, for all those who are unemployed, we ask for your blessing as they seek work. For those who continue the hard work of grieving their losses, especially for the family and friends of Bruce Decker and the family and friends of Leah Dawes, we ask for your compassionate love and that they may be aware of your presence and the comfort that you give. We continue to lift up all those that have unspoken requests that you alone are aware of. We ask for your blessing, for courage to face each day for wisdom and decisions that need to be made, and for joy in the journey. And as we think of the joy that you can give, we are reminded that you have given us a prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples and that we can pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to pause in this moment, which would be our time for taking our offering if we were gathered together, and thank you for your faithful support of Schenkel and its ministries. And also I want to take a moment to lift up the One Great Hour of Sharing offering that we, will, we are receiving this whole month of March. And I just want to share a mission moment with you from Vietnam. The uh, theme for One Great Hour of Sharing this year is to let love flow. The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us many things about what it means to be a global community. One of the most basic things we've been constantly reminded of is the importance of washing our hands. 
in the battle to prevent infectious disease. Han and her mom live in a poor rural village about 135 miles no northwest of Hanoi, Vietnam's capital. Han had no idea what a toilet was. Where she lives, people still use fields, bushes, and streams as their bathrooms. This situation is all too common in many places in rural Vietnam and across Southeast Asia. In September of 2018, latrine and water supply improvements were brought to Han's school. Since then, Han and her friends have had an exciting time experiencing modern latrines and clean water taps and how these conveniences lead to better hygiene and ultimately better health for the whole community. When you give to one great hour of sharing, you are providing clean water for drinking and sanitation to children like Han and her schoolmates. As God's compassion flows through you, your gifts will bring the promise of better health to children. Please give generously to support this important work. And I'll see if I can show you this picture of, these, of Han and her friends and then other little girls in Vietnam washing their hands. So thank you for supporting One Great Hour of Sharing also. And now as we go forth into yet another week of our Lenten practices, in this season of Lent, in this time of pandemic, remember that Jesus was lifted up on the cross and showed God's love for us in offering us eternal life, life lived in the presence of God. Go forth this week empowered to live that life in God's presence. Amen. Stay.